Hello and welcome back to Elliot's Podcast. Thank you for tuning in. That was a jam in E major, was the key. And it's always an experience and a, a bit of a trip where, where it's going to go. And so, let's see what's on tap for today. I'm not going to talk much about the... Uh, I'm not going to talk much about the the performance there, but I am going to share a bit of some stuff that I've been been looking at and and working through. So this is a bit about some things. Yeah, that I've been. One thing I wanted to talk about quickly is the importance of learning music at any age so as and I talked about it last week we said we did the interview with Matt James and I asked him about some tips for people who are getting my adults that are like getting back into playing music and I, we couldn't I couldn't really go into too much detail about what it means to me personally as someone who takes quite a quite a few lessons. I take weekly lessons and and I would say every week is a is a challenge as a grown adult and having responsibilities. But every time the lesson comes around, you know, and I am pretty tired after that experience because you had to I had to get ready for it and then then we had to work on stuff. And I would say that process to come back around week after week is I have not found anything in my life that really compares. And so I I understand people could take they could learn things online but and 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 they would be able to implement those things if they were perform let's say they they joined a band and then they they were learning things online and then they went out and played in that band and played shows like that would totally be the same experience they would they would know what to work on and then and then the kind of the the way they performed would be the the yardstick but for me it's it's i don't really i don't operate in that way and the work i do in the lessons isn't isn't always directly related sometimes to what I what I do when I'm playing music like here and so the, they're kind of a little bit separated which is a little bit weird that you t- take music lessons and then they're not really the same as they're not really being always directly applied there's ma- and there's no doubt there's many things that that carry over and the biggest one is really just um they used to say i used to hear the people say that it was good for kids to learn music because of the discipline and i've come to realize that that is the one of the core that's one of the core things that you would learn and 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 it would be very similar to i guess if you want to become good at math like you'd have to daily do daily repetition of of problems and working through them so they're they're all similar um but the difference is, is that for a lot of people math might not be that um you have to really be interested in math to in order to do that and same with music like you can't really prescribe that someone will play music for this purpose without having a a genuine interest in in learning it but i would take it if someone's like listening to what i do and they listen to my music they might be have an inclination to play like they i think i think if someone's in this zone they're kind of in, they're kind of interested and so i'm kind of like a sales salesperson for taking up instruments and learning at any age and I think even in in small small doses like you don't have to be um 
you don't have to take on really intense uh, songs. You know, that's why ukulele has been really popular. I think that'd be a great, like, kind of stress relief out. Um, you get an out. <laughs> I see what's happened now. So there was this thing. was There was no EQ here. A little confused why it was very muffled. Um, so the... So you can, uh, yeah, I would say that playing, taking lessons and playing, it will it will really teach you some new things about um, scheduling and and time management because you have to figure out when you're going to play, and so I'm going to put that one on the table, and I'm not going to go too far in but there was one other thing about that that I wanted to address from Matt's the interview with Matt last week was was that he did suggest that people don't take an all or nothing approach to to playing and practicing so people would say if I don't have the full time to to work with then they might not play at all but he he recommends people don't don't take that approach if you can just do a little bit then that's great and 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 seeing what's manageable and then this week i wrote on my website what what is the ideal amount of time to practice and i've put down 20 minutes because the the standard would be like an hour a day that's a good like heuristic a quick short form but an hour a day is not always realistic and so 20 minutes is is actually doable and you can get quite a bit done in 20 minutes you'd be surprised. And then 20 minutes can easily be extended to 30 minutes and 40 minutes. So as a, as a general scheduling tool, I would say 20 minutes is a good, a good place to start and preferably as early as you can, because when the day gets going, it might be really hard to, to come back uh, to, to get it. So if you did 20 minutes early in the morning, you would be warm. You'd have some ideas about what to work on, and then you could come back to it in the evening and try a bit again. I have my my booklet here because I I've been writing down some of my method, and that's why it's open. and I, And so, I do believe playing music is part of my method, and it's part of what I want uh, people to to do more of. But keep in mind, being a good music listener is just as good. And taking an active interest in when you put on, if you don't want to play an instrument, if you put put on music and you try to listen intently and you try to listen to what, what you can understand from this, this music. And, and that's why maybe starting to get into classical and jazz and you can, can pick up some appreciation for music that gets a bit more complex nothing wrong with just basic pop music and you can even learn what what kind of makes makes a pop track really work and there's actually a lot of youtube videos about that online so the the thing that i want to i always have a running list of 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 topics and i guess the one that i'll i'll go with is I have a friend who has a bit of phobia with the with technology and the computer and I feel pretty bad and I'm helping this person not with that issue <laughs> I'm helping them uh do some get some stuff ready for combination of music and some like promoting music and some other stuff that's kind of in the in the ballpark a little bit different but and so I wanted to just quickly uh, acknowledge and address that I think it's it's not far fetched to to start to to get a bit of a phobia with the tech stuff. And there was a good interview with uh, Stephen Pressfield that I heard this week with M- Mary Forleo the entrepreneur lady and the interview was about 
put his his slogan now <laughs> the name of his book is put your ass where your heart is and that means get into the room it was basically <laughs> reiterating so much stuff that you might have heard me say on this show re um get yourself into the room that where you where everything is most important to you and i guess it's it's tricky sometimes because we might have like like other stuff gets mixed in and so like my computer that i would typically make music on is kind of has a lot of memories and stuff buried in it because of different work things so i can understand why we take a we get kind of a we build up little phobias and i think this generation is is going to build them up even more because we we're just overloaded it's it's reaching a maximum a boiling point if you will so it's it's quite tricky and there's no answer but the if someone has like a phobia and i can admit i have some as well like i'm tired of working on the music on the computer and this setup that you're seeing like i i just the music i just played was improvised and didn't use the computer at all and except for some of the recording part of it but not um not much engineering and then you know obviously to finish this show i have to do that i have to put it in the computer and 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 work on it but i've developed a lot of methodologies to not look at a computer but i don't i don't think that's really healthy and i'd like to now that i could see it in a friend who is is way in a in a way deeper state i can address i can say okay actually i have some of those characteristics of avoiding doing your most important work which is called your most creative work because let's face it i mean with the the power of the computer for most things that we do in projects is you, at some point you need to get in there and you need to do stuff and you, and it might be let's say you make art and you you do that completely offline well you're going to hopefully have to promote that work and so you should uh, develop tools and strategies so that you can can go there with a bit of effortless um I was going to say effortless mastery, but I or I I don't want to say that. That's that's the reference of a book that I that I I discuss sometimes. But a, a kind of an effortless sense, for lack of better words, that you can can go in and do what you need to do and and not necessarily fight it so much. And that that, that starts to to dip into some of the stuff around social media i would admit that yeah it's social media it's it's email sending emails so i'm not going to to go through any nuts and bolts here but i am actually going to start to look at this a little deeper and and try to work on some some tools to help people if they are definitely you know, avoiding doing the work. And, and I would say the big one always comes back and, and I spoke about it just a few minutes ago with the music, but if you have some stuff in the computer that needs to get done and you're kind of putting it off, I would say definitely do that in the morning is one like earliest, very early on. I know we often have a thing about don't like look at screens early in the day like don't check your email don't do this or that but i think there are times when i think it's important to do that and it's a way of getting it done um you might not want to do that right after you wake up and you might want to still keep the phone away that's like a good option and but it, it should probably be early on in the day get it done and get it out of the way so the other part of it would be that you can use chrome to block um sorry not to block you can set up profiles in chrome 
And that's a helpful tool for having like something for work and then for personal. And then a third one, which might be like super focus mode. (laughs) And yeah, I think that's part of it. It it is tricky though, because sometimes like you might do a task, you need to do something in the computer and like you, like you need to post something and, and whatever. And you need to go into your email to get, like, the website you're using sends you a password um, two-factor authentication. Then you got to go into your email to get that out. And then you got to now fish through. Now you see newsletters. And so this is the, that's kind of what I'm getting at with this whole thing is, like, how do you stay focused and and go from, you know, just get everything done and not get sidetracked too much and and I think one of the other things that might help is like if you write down ahead of time like what you need to do and you you just go in and do it now from the the creative side of things I would say your best friend like let's say you did you use the iPad to do procreate to um, make art but you open up the iPad and then you start going elsewhere so definitely like turning the Wi-Fi off on that iPad before you begin would be helpful. I have a script on my my Mac that it will launch my music program that I use, Ableton, but it'll also deactivate the Wi-Fi in the same click. So it's there's a thing in Mac called Automator that lets you, it comes with the Mac, it lets you make little scripts. So I had that for a while. Uh, another option is to unplug your router. doesn't work as well if you're in a family. You turn off the internet for everyone. But that is a good one that uh, gets rid of the internet. And then, yeah, and then the the, the Stephen Pressfield interview, They t- he talks about like an hour, like spend an hour a day if you can on the thing that you're trying to get done. And so... This this idea would be that you 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 kind of get into the, your your room your space which is right here's one of my music rooms my other room is my my bedroom I practice do a lot of the music um, acoustic practice in there and you you have that hour and you you put the phone away and you turn the internet off so it is a lot of balancing. Um, you know, and we need technology to to do things, but we also need to put it away when it's time to focus and really generate stuff. Like, I, you know, this, I mean, th- uh, that's why one of the, the big benefits of the podcast is that when I'm here, like, I have to, I, I can't check anything. And I have to come here every week to do something. So it's been good for that, but most, not everyone would, they don't have to go this far. This is, this is pretty intense, what I do. All right, so that's it. I hope you enjoyed the music. Something in E major. I'll have to come up with a name for it when I listen back to it. And yeah, thank you. Um, this is Elliot Feinberg on Elliot's podcast. And my website is elliotfeinberg.com. And thank you, and I hope you have a great week, and thanks for tuning in. Okay, take care.